Well, if you have your notes with you this morning, we're going to talk about this idea of the progression of our spiritual life. It's a pretty simple thought that I want to bring to you this morning, but here's the process, okay? In our Bible, our Bibles are divided between an Old Testament and a New Testament. An Old Testament and a New Testament. And in the New Testament, Paul tells us that everything that happened in the Old Testament was actually an example of the progress that God wants to do in our lives. We get that from 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Here's what it says. Paul says, these things happen to them as what? Everybody say examples. Oh, y'all are good. As examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the ages has come. So what Paul is saying is, when we go back and read the stories of the Old Testament, those stories are actually an example on what God wants to do in our lives where we are today. Now, sometimes we overlook some of the Old Testament. We think, oh, well, you know, that's thousands of years ago. But there are pictures in the Old Testament that are very important for us to learn. One of them that we're going to learn today is from the book of Exodus. Now, let me just set it up for you in case you're new to the Bible and new to this whole history thing. In the book of Exodus, we read the story where a group of people known as the children of Israel are slaves in Egypt. The bad guy in the story is named Pharaoh. Pharaoh is the leader of the nation of Egypt, and he's keeping suppressed the children of Israel. And he's making them his slaves. And the children of Israel call out to Jehovah God, and Jehovah God hears their prayers. And Jehovah God goes to the backside of the desert, and he sees a guy by the name of Moses. Everybody say Moses. Moses. He's an important part of the story. And Moses sees this bush that's on fire, but it's not burning up. And he goes over to see what's going on, and at the bush, God talks to Moses. And I'm paraphrasing it, but God says to Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, you got to understand, Pharaoh was like the big dude. He was like the president, the prime minister, the king. He was all wrapped in one. And Moses said, God, I don't think he's going to go for that. Right? And yet, God promised to Moses, I'm going to show my strength to Pharaoh, and he will do it. So the story rolls on. Moses goes to Egypt, goes to Pharaoh, says, God told me to tell you to let his people go. And Pharaoh says, who's God? I'm God. And things got better instead of getting worse. Just a little side note there. Sometimes when you're obeying God, things don't always get great at the beginning. See, I thought if we, like, commit our life to God, then everything's going to go wonderful. I'm never going to have another problem. Hello? Go read the book of Exodus. Because when Moses goes to Pharaoh, things get worse before they get better. And so God says, hey, here's what I'm going to do, Moses. I'm going to send judgment. And the judgment came in the form of plagues. I mean, like really bad stuff, like water turning to blood, like gnats everywhere, frogs everywhere, locusts eating up the crops, one after another after another. And this goes on for like a year, most historians believe. And each time when a plague would come, Pharaoh would kind of repent, and then he would get over it and say, nope, not going to do it. And then there comes this time where God says to Moses, and you read this in Exodus chapter 12, God tells Moses, tonight's the night. On this date, I'm going to deliver my children from Egypt. And the judgment of God is going to come on the nation. And this was the judgment. God said, in every house across the land, the firstborn child is going to die. But, Mo, but he says to Moses, you tell 
the children of Israel that in every house they're to take a lamb and they're supposed to roast the lamb. It's like barbecue city all over where the children of Israel live. And at 6 o'clock at night, everybody's to barbecue the lamb. And in every house, the dad is supposed to take some of the blood from the lamb and put it on the doorpost of their home. We read it from Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. This is what God said. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will what? Pass over you. I want you to look at that a moment. God made a promise. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. Now, this is a pretty cool thought. I want you to understand something here. God didn't say, when I look at you, if you're good enough, you won't be judged. God's plan of salvation was not based upon how good the people were. God didn't say, if you're better than your neighbor, well, you won't have problems. And God didn't say, if you're part of the children of Israel, you won't have any problems. It wasn't based on our goodness. It wasn't based on our ethnicity. Everybody okay out there? In fact, if you read the book of Exodus, there were some people who were Egyptians who heard what was going on. They weren't part of the children of Israel, but they believed what God said, and they put the blood on their doorpost also. And when God saw the blood, he passed over that home and did not judge that house. And they were free. They were saved from the judgment of God because of the blood. This is good, isn't it? So on our outlines this morning, here we go. You got these little outlines? Step number one in our spiritual progression is Jesus' blood. Because that lamb that was slain thousands of years ago by the, by the children of Israel in Egypt was actually a symbol of the blood of Jesus that would be shed on the cross of Calvary for our forgiveness. And that's the word that goes in the blank. Everybody say forgiveness. 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 You're good. I like that. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. How do we get forgiveness? How are we saved before God? Not because we're so good, because I've met some of you, you're never going to be good enough to deserve being saved. I'm never going to be good enough to deserve being saved, but here's the awesome thing about it. Because of the grace and the mercy of God, it's not based on my goodness. It's based on, do I accept God's plan of salvation. And you know what God's plan of salvation is? Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him would not perish but could have everlasting life. That's pretty powerful. On your notes, I gave Acts chapter 4 verse 12. On the, they're preaching and they say, salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Just turn to somebody beside you and say, salvation is through the blood of Jesus. We are forgiven through his blood. And today, I want to tell you, regardless of who you are, where you've been, what you've done, or what you're doing right now, God offers forgiveness today. And before we close this morning, I'm going to have an opportunity for individuals who say, today's my day. Today is my day that I'm going to admit I'm a sinner, I can't save myself, but Jesus died on the cross to forgive me, and I want to be forgiven. And today, the miracle of forgiveness is going to come to this room. Amen? Amen. That's going to be awesome. But guess what? Our spiritual journey doesn't stop at the cross or at the blood of Jesus or at forgiveness. 
Because after judgment came to the land of Egypt and the children of Israel grabbed their stuff and they headed out of the land, God directed them to take a journey to where they wound up in a geographical location where the Red Sea was in front of them, mountains were on each side of them, and guess what? Pharaoh changed his mind. And Pharaoh came charging after them. Because guess what, ladies and gentlemen? When you make a decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ, your old hurts, hang-ups, and habits are going to try to come back into your life. And they're going to try to take over your life. And this is what happens in the second step. Because when they got to the Red Sea, Moses and the children of Israel go, God, what are we going to do? We're trapped. Pharaoh's going to kill us. We go back to Exodus. And we read in Exodus chapter 14, the Lord said to Moses, I like this, why are you crying out to me? That's pretty cool, isn't it? God says, hey, what are you complaining about, dude? I put you here on purpose. And then he says, tell the Israelites to move on. There's water in front of us. How are we going to move on? God says, here's the plan. Raise your staff. Stretch it out with your hand over and see the divide, the water, so that the Israelites can go through the sea on dry ground. Then I'm going to harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them and I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all of his army, his chariots and his horsemen. What's God saying? God says, hey Moses, stop whining and start walking. And what were they supposed to walk through? The water. You know what the water was? The New Testament tells us the water was the symbol of water baptism. The blood on their doorpost brought forgiveness, but the water, are you ready for this? This is your next word, brought freedom. Everybody say freedom. Freedom. See, we all need to be forgiven for our sins, but we also need to be free from our hurts, habits, and hang-ups, our addictions, the old Pharaoh who has controlled us, that old taskmaster who made us do the things we didn't want to do, who kept us in bondage. And that's what water baptism is. Because when we come into this tank of water baptism, we are burying the old man and coming alive in the freedom of Almighty God. And I'm going to tell you, folks, If you've never experienced that, this would be an awesome day to do that. You say, well, I just thought we'd just get wet. No, that's just an outward wet. There's something on the inside that happens when you bury Pharaoh. In fact, if you go in the book of Exodus and you read the whole story, when the children of Israel went through the Red Sea and they got on the other side, Moses, God said to Moses, now you tell the children of Israel, two million, turn around and look what's about to happen. Because after today, you will never see Pharaoh again. Because when Pharaoh and his army went into the water to chase him, God put the water back. And the entire Egyptian army was drowned. Hello. Some of you need to drown your past today. That's what these folks are doing this morning. That's why they get so excited. That's why they have the tears. That's why their family is here to celebrate with them. Why? Because they're burying that old man. They said, I'm not going back to that old life. And some of you today, you've already made a decision to make Jesus the Lord of your life. And you've been a Christian. You've been a follower of Christ. Maybe you've been following Christ for years. Maybe just for a few weeks. It doesn't matter. But if you haven't been baptized in water to bury that old man... We'd love to invite you to join the next group that's going to be baptized in a few moments. And you say, well, how can I do that? I didn't come prepared. We are. Okay? Surprise. We went and bought t-shirts and shorts and towels. And we have everything you need to be baptized this morning. And in a few moments when we have a prayer moment, if you're here today and you say, Pastor Darius, man, I, I need to bury some stuff in my past. 
every time we do this, I have somebody ask me, well, you know, I was baptized years ago and when I was a kid or something, and, you know, should I really do it again? I say, well, is there some things you need to bury? You've been walking away from God for a while. In fact, in a few moments, we're going we're gonna to have a lady over here that I met a few weeks ago. She recommitted her life to the Lord after 29 years. She told me I was baptized 29 years ago, but today I need to be baptized again. I need to recommit my life to the Lord. And the great thing about her story is sitting over here are some of her kids and grandkids because when they heard mom was going to be baptized today, they said this would be a perfect day for us to dedicate our children. Her grandchildren are going to be dedicated to the Lord up here this morning to celebrate baptism and dedication. She took me over here before service and says, hey, pastor, these are all of my family over here. What a great story. What a great story. We're burying the old, and we're coming alive to freedom. So through the blood of Jesus, there's forgiveness. Through the water, there's freedom. But there's a third step. Everybody say third step. When we read in the book of Exodus, after they came out of the Red Sea, they still weren't in the promised land yet. Guess what? After you're saved and you're baptized in water, you still got a few folks you got to live with. Some of them are in your own house. Some of them you work with. And even though you're forgiven and you're free, you still need some direction in your life. And so you know what God gave them? God gave them a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I called it God's air conditioning system because they were in the desert. In the desert, it's hot in the daytime. You need a cloud. It's cold at night. You need some fire. And it was real simple. God just said, told to Moses, if the cloud moves, you move. If the cloud stops, you stop. Hello? You know what the New Testament tells us? The New Testament tells us that that cloud and pillar of fire was the Spirit of God who was given to guide them to their destiny. And that brings me to my third thought. Not only do I need the blood of Jesus to be forgiven, water baptism to be free, I also need spirit baptism for empowerment. Everybody say empowerment. Empowerment. We believe that God gives to us when we become a follower of Jesus Christ and we confess Christ as our Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us. But there is an additional experience that we read about in the book of Acts, chapter 2, when the disciples were all together in one place and suddenly the Holy Spirit came upon them and an empowerment and a fullness Throughout the book of Acts, sometimes it's called a baptism of the Spirit. Sometimes it's called a fullness of the Spirit. But basically, the purpose of that was to empower us to live this life. Can I, can I help you out, okay? You ready for this? Being a follower of Jesus Christ is way too tough to do in your own smarts. I got to have some help. I need the Holy Spirit who can nudge me in the right way to go, the right person to talk to, the right person not to talk to. How y'all doing out there? It's that inner nudge of the Holy Spirit that says, hey, Darius, you don't need to do that anymore. And it's perfecting me. The Spirit within me is perfecting me. He's empowering me to reach the destiny that God has for me by revealing truth to me. And I want to tell you, if you've never asked God to baptize you in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, this would be a great morning. Doesn't have to be any big deal. Just says, God, I want all of you. Several years ago, I was teaching on this topic. And uh, there was a young man who had just started coming into our ministry. He was a teenage boy. He, his mom and dad made him come to church as punishment because he was messing up, making some bad life choices. His name was Kenny. And uh, Kenny was a, a very, his family were a very smart family, very smart, but he wasn't making good life choices. So his mom and dad decided to, by making him go to church, they would straighten him out. And so I just decided Kenny 
didn't, you ever, you ever see somebody who is there but they don't want to be there? That was Kenny. Long red hair, just had this look on his face like, I don't like you and I don't like church. Now, there's a part of my nature that when I see somebody like that, I just decide I'm going to make them like me. And so I did. So I asked Kenny, hey, you want, let's go get some pizza. I figured, teenage boy, love pizza. He kind of looked at me strange and says, I'm buying. It's okay, Kenny, come on. And so for the next w few weeks after church on Wednesday night, I'd take Kenny out for pizza. And we'd just sit there and talk. And he started to just kind of open up about his journey. I remember the night that Kenny made a decision to commit his life to be a follower of Christ. It was an amazing moment. And then a few weeks later, Kenny made a decision. We were having a baptism service. Kenny made a decision to be baptized. And then I was teaching about the Holy Spirit, and that was like really eh, a little weird for Kenny. And I talked about the empowerment of the Holy Spirit and God giving us a personal prayer language as a part of that. And I gave scriptures, and, and so Kenny was like, yeah, I'll have to think through that one. And I remember early one Thursday morning after a Wednesday night Bible study, Kenny called me, and he said, I got to tell you what happened last night. I says, okay, what happened? He says, I went home after you were talking about that Holy Spirit stuff, and I started reading there in the book of Acts some of those scriptures you gave us. And he said, after I read it in the book of Acts, he said, I knelt down beside my bed, and I said, God, I don't understand this, but if it's from you, I want it. And he said, the next thing I knew, all of a sudden, there was these words coming out of my mouth I didn't understand. And he said, I just had this awareness of God in my bedroom. And he said, for like the next 30 minutes, all I could do was just worship God in a heavenly language. He says, can you explain what's going on? I said, sure, bub. Let's talk about it. You see, it doesn't have to be anything weird or it doesn't have to even be anything public. God is wherever you are. And if you invite God into your world, wherever you are, God will meet you right there. Can you say amen on that? Okay. Well, here's what I want you to do now. I would like everybody in the room to bow your heads. Boys, girls, teenagers, adults, let's bow our heads. Let's close our eyes for a sacred moment. And would you ask God right now, let's just whisper this prayer. Let's say, God, what are you saying to me? Take a moment and listen to what God is saying. Heavenly Father, I pray that right now across this room, for those in this room, for those watching us online, you would speak to hearts this morning. Holy Spirit, would you draw to you those who need to make a choice today? change us this morning through your presence Lord with your heads bowed eyes closed this is a sacred moment here's what I'm going to ask you to do just between you and me and God if you're here this morning and you would say Pastor Darius today I recognize that I need forgiveness. I believe Jesus died for my sins. And I can't keep living this way. And I want him to forgive me and to cleanse me so that I can have that forgiveness. If that's you right now, heads bowed, eyes closed, this is private. Would you just lift up a hand and say, Pastor Darius, would you pray for me? Today's my day. Just lift it up. Thank you. Anyone else say, Pastor Darius, thank you. God bless you. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Four. There's five. Anyone else? I look up at the top. Thank you. I see hands up in the balcony. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This is awesome. You may put your hands down. Now with our heads still bowed, some of you in the room to say, Pastor Darius, I I'm already a follower of Christ. But, but I need to be baptized in water. I'd like to talk to someone about that today. If that's you, would you just raise a hand right now and say, here, that's what I need to do. I, I need to do that today. Anyone want to do that? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. All right. You may put your hands down. Now, third invitation is for those who would say, Pastor Darius, I need some empowerment in my Christian life. And today I would like to ask God to just baptize me in the Holy Spirit. If that's you right now, would you just lift a hand and say, hey, I, I, I want to receive that. I want to open up my heart to that. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Okay. Anyone else? Thanks. Yeah. Okay, church family, would you stand with me right where you are? Just stand up. Everybody look at me right here. This is a very important moment that we're going to do right now. We're going to have prayer together. And we're going to see God do some amazing things. I, I lost count of how many people raised their hands. But if you raised your hand, or maybe you didn't, but you know you should have, here's what I'm going to invite you to do. I'm going to invite you, whether you're up here in the stadium, up in the balcony, or down here on the floor, I'd love to just take a moment to have a personal moment of prayer with you. And some of our team would love to pray with you. So I'm going to invite you. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to invite you in just a second to step out from where you are. Come and stand with me here at the front. And we're going to have prayer together. For whatever issue it was that you needed. And we're going to see God work for you today. So right now. If you raised your hand, or maybe you didn't, but you should have, would you just come and join me right up here? Some of my friends up here, come on down. Come on. Come on down. Would you give a big hand to those that are coming right now? Come on. Come and join me. Come on. Come on. Hi. Good morning. Hi. I'm Darius. What's your name? Aretha. Aretha. Okay. Hi. Hi. Melissa. Melissa? Hi, Melissa. Hey, come on up here, folks. Hi. Come up here. Hi, I'm Darius. What's your name? Dre. Dre? Okay. Good morning, sweet lady. Thank you for coming up here. Hi, sir. I'm Darius. Philip. Philip. Hey, that's a great Bible name, man. Philip's all over the book of Acts. You gonna be a good Philip? He was an amazing miracle worker. Sparked an incredible revival. God's got some of that for you, bub. You know that? There's a destiny you haven't even seen yet. Somebody was prophetic and giving you a name. Grab a hold of that, bub. Okay? Good morning, sir. Hi. I'm Darius. What's your name? Tim. Hi, Tim. God bless you. Come on up. Hi. I met you before. Sarah? Is that right? Hey. Thanks. Great morning, huh? When I saw you earlier this morning, I knew God was doing something for you. No accidents with God. He planned the day for you and mine. That's how much he loves you, okay? <laughs> That'll be awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Here you go. I keep those up here because I need them. Good morning. Hi. I'm Darius. Alexis. Alexis? Oh, that's a beautiful name. Thank you. Hi, young man. What's your name? Joshua. Hi, Joshua. Wow. Joshua was the leader of those children of Israel. You going to be a leader for God? Amen, Amen man speak that over you this morning now church family would you stretch out your hands towards our friends and friends as you stand here this morning I'm going to lead us in a prayer maybe you've never even talked to God but would you just take a moment and pray out loud with me would you come join me right here let's pray together pray this out loud with me dear Heavenly Father I come in Jesus name I confess I am a sinner I cannot save myself. Today, I ask Jesus to be my Savior and to be my Lord. Holy Spirit, I ask you to empower me to live this life in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Father, I pray for my friends who stand at this altar this morning. I pray for a release of your mercy and your grace. I come against every principality and power that would confuse, that would trap, or that would put them in bondage. And I declare today that whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Your word is working now in Jesus' name. And everyone that agreed said, Amen. Amen. All right. Yeah.